Dragon Lord's Consort Part 2. Spike was slowly becoming aware of his surroundings as his vision slowly started to return. He heard voices, more or less angry or concerned voices? Twilight? Ember? Can't take him back. He's only a... Is there another way? But if I don't... If he says no... He's awakening. Slowly, Spike sat up from the ground, rubbing his head. Ugh. What... What happened? Twilight quickly came to his side. Easy, you just passed out. He shook his head before looking at Twilight, then to Ember, who looked worried and conflicted at the same time. Ember? She sighed. I'm sorry for bringing this on short notice to you, Spike, but my choices were limited. Garble would have been the following choice if you did not accept. She shuddered at the thought. Spike looked around for him, seeing no sign of said dragon or the other one as well. Slowly standing up, he also saw that the others had left as well, leaving him, Ember, and Twilight. With a somewhat shaky tone, he spoke to Ember. Why me, though? I told you, you were the first to grab the bloodstone before... No, I mean, why me? Why not another dragon? Surely there are hundreds if not thousands of other dragons to choose from. I'm just... me. He stated it like as if he was nothing special. I'm a pony-loving dragon. You said it yourself. I am different from other dragons. I'm not strong. I can't fly. Dragons aren't supposed to share and... well... yeah. Ember grew up with all those lessons burned into her mind since she first hatched from the egg. She knew that dragons are greedy, power-hungry, and above all, mean. However, the first time since she met Spike, a dragon born outside of the Dragonlands, she had found herself drawn to him. He was a dragon born and raised by ponies. Ponies whom loved one another, cared, shared, and even sacrificed themselves for each other. With a rare smile she had been rarely seen given, she spoke with utmost confidence. It is those qualities the reason I chose you, Spike. You're right, you are different and maybe that is what our kind needs change. You changed me in a day to be caring, thoughtful, even merciful. Had I not thought about what you did for me, I probably would have never even considered Garble to serve me as punishment, let alone live. To other dragons, ponies might be considered weak, helpless, and not strong enough to handle anything. She motioned at Twilight. I believe that they're your greatest strengths, your greatest power, and your generous heart. It knows no bounds, and that's why I still choose you. No qualities can, well, be found in any other dragon. She paused and looked him straight into the eyes, bearing into his soul. Spike, I choose you because... I've found a liking to your prestigious upbringing. I'd rather have you than any other dragon because... There are no other dragons that I've become more fond than you. She paused again, her cheeks twinging red as she realized what she'd said. Spike also grew red and looked away sheepishly. I... I like you too, Ember. I know we just met, but I actually liked you. I thought you were stunning and beautiful and... He paused, realizing he also said too much, but when he peeked back at Ember, she was red-faced and beyond embarrassed. And cute. She tried to make a pouty face, but it came out more cuter than before. Not cute. She mumbled. Twilight was watching the whole display with glee, while at the same time was writing more notes about the dragon culture. Apparently she was taking close observation on dragon courtship rituals. Despite the ferociousness of dragons that many have come to believe, dragons in the rare moments show affection for one another, if emotions are shared simultaneously from both partners. Uh, partners? Was that the right word? Uh, speaking of... Hey guys, I know that we have a moment here but do you think we can get back on topic at Hoof? Or, er, Claw? Both dragons snapped out of their embarrassment before focusing on Twilight. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, now then, I am aware that it is sudden, but I will give you time. Though I require an answer as soon as possible. Um, how soon? Ember scratched her arms and looked away. Uh, by high noon tomorrow. I must return to the Dragonlands, with or without you sealing my fate. What? Twilight cried out. Tomorrow afternoon? 
Ember, that, that's not enough time. Besides, why do you need to have a dragon by your side if you're already ruler of all the dragons? It's not like you need an heir or betrothed. The Bloodstone is only handed down after you ruled for years, and you need to allow other dragons a chance to rule. Ember nodded. I am aware of that, Twilight. However, part of the rules for the Bloodstone state that I must be seen as the most powerful dragon in the lands. By my side, I need to have a dragon that is worthy enough to be my mate. They must be seen as just as great as me. Hence, should I choose to have a mate, they must be able to participate in the challenge to acquire the Bloodstone. If I didn't choose, then it would be a dragon who comes second close because of that difficulty of the trials. Just as you saw, well, not all dragons made it through the first few, and even fewer got to the end. It still doesn't make sense to me either, but... I also believe that's why my father didn't want me to go. All the other dragons were of age to start courting or mating. And seeing as Spike and I are the youngest ones that did the challenge, we can't be courted until we reach age. Yet the rules are firm about it, though father has been known to bend some of the rules. So, because I survived the gauntlet, got the scepter, but then gave it to you in the end, I have to be your mate? Asked Spike, both fearful and somewhat curious about it. And since we're both too young, well, we technically wouldn't be, uh, well, mates until we're both of age, he asked, not too sure about the draconic term's full meanings. Ember gave a small nod. In part, though, Spike, it's because of your intelligence that got me the scepter, and your bravery that I also decided to choose you. Twilight was writing more notes before a thought came up. Um, Ember, quick question. What if you had won by yourself, but neither Garble nor Spike were second, and you chose no other dragon again? What if the second dragon was to come in and was a female dragon? Spike suddenly became very, very interested as well. Even his eyes and tail went up, hoping to hear a good answer. If that were the case... Ember answered a bit hesitantly. Then she and I would become consorts instead. She would be my life mate. If dragons could have nosebleeds, Spike would be bleeding out a river by now. Awesome, he said softly. Twilight was busy writing more notes, not noticing Spike's reaction. Should I choose to bear hatchlings, I would need to find a male worth trying to mate with, but would still be bounded to my mate. We might both even try to become Egg Baron, but ultimately, it would be my choice to participate in such an event. Despite Spike's young age, he knew enough about pony-related things to understand what she had just said, and what could be described as every cult's or dragon's dream. Two females going at each other, or the glory of glories, a full-on threesome. Let's not forget, Spike may be young, but he wasn't innocent. At this point, Spike's indignity began to show as he stared at Ember non-stop, his imagination running wild. Ember saw his gaze and looked somewhat flustered. Um, Spike, are you okay? Spike quickly shook his head before nodding. Yeah, sorry, just dozed off a bit there. I see. Her gaze went to the writing Twilight. Uh, Twilight? Twilight stopped her writing and looked at her. Yes? Is it agreeable then? Until midday tomorrow? Shall I have my answer? Um... She paused before clearing her throat. I know this is difficult for you, Ember, but Spike can't go. He's way too young, a baby at that. I'm sorry. Ember looked dejected, but Spike quickly spoke out. Wait, why can't I go? Why don't I get a say in it? He asked, sounding a bit angered. Twilight looked at him, almost in surprise. Spike, it's one thing that went with you last time. At least any of us can protect you and watch you, but you going to the Dragonlands? We won't be able to guide you or take care of you if you stay permanently. Under my rule, he will be protected, Ember assured. Despite what you may think you have recently seen of dragons during the gauntlet, there is a lot more that you do not know. Besides, no dragon shall dare harm Spike or come close to me without my say. He will also be raised to act like a true dragon. But he's a baby dragon! You can't court with him! He's not even of pony age! Something stirred inside of Spike, an inner anger not akin to greed, and the mention of being called Baby seemed to aggravate him. 
And again, Twilight, I am aware. However, the rules state I have to be seen with a mate of worth, and while he is adolescent, when he becomes of age, we can be courted. For now, it would be considered a pre-engagement, or arranged courtmanship, if you will. Even my father knows that I am too young to be courted, but I must wait and if Spike chooses... What if I said yes? He finally spoke out, his voice sounding a bit mature. What if I choose to be your mate? Like you said, we are both young and we can't really do much, but if it means protecting you and maybe Equestria from another dragon's rule or even you from another nasty dragon, then I'm willing to do it. Spike! Twilight spoke in shock. What? How? You can't go! Why? He asked, almost in anger. His arms crossed. So will I continue to be a baby dragon, like I'm some fragile little foal, that no pony else takes me seriously? That even after I have tried so hard to impress the one I care for and she treats me like a kid? Twilight stared at him, wide-eyed and shocked at his response. Ember didn't need to spend a whole lot of time with ponies to understand the tension in the room. She knew that this was a difficult situation, for both of them, so she turned to the door before informing them. I'll just leave you two to discuss this, she said before quickly excusing herself, and exited the room and closed it behind her, feeling guilty for it dividing them so. The spike was beyond angry now. Years of him being called a kid or baby? Yes, there were times where he would allow it, but now... Now that he just completed a challenge that would frighten most dragons or even accomplish what many other dragons couldn't do, he felt like he had really matured. Still, he was coming off too strong and sighed as he looked over to see Ember walking out of the room, just before the door shut behind her. Closing his eyes slowly, Spike took in a deep breath like Cadence had taught him to once, before looking back to Twilight. I'm sorry, Twilight, for acting the way... But... <sighs> After that, I... I just didn't want to be treated like a baby anymore. I mean, I completed a challenge that would get a normal pony hurt or worse. I know it was because of you, Rarity, and Ember that we managed to make it to the end, but it was still a huge thing for me, and I felt like after that I shouldn't be treated like a foal or baby anymore. Twilight's gaze quickly softened as he spoke. More and more she realized what he was saying was true, and the more she thought about it, the more she knew that, well, he was right. Spike was at times childish, but he was really more intelligent than anything else. He was smarter than most of any other foal around, perhaps even more so than a lot of adult ponies she knew personally. She had raised him to be on par with her own intellect, and he had proven time and time again that he could take care of himself. Whether it was trying to save the Crystal Empire from a dark tyrant, or going through a dangerous challenge like the Gauntlet of Fire for a magic scepter, not only has he proven himself brave, but he has proven that he does have a big heart. He had given Rarity his most prized possession of the Fire Ruby. He had worked non-stop for Applejack due to his Dragon Code, even though he made up the Dragon Code. He endured adventures with Twilight that would leave her and her friends exhausted or wounded, yet he would continue on, her number one assistant. How many times had she relied on him for the most prestigious task? How many times has he braved the unknown with her? Despite knowing the dangers that comes? The amount of near and unspeakable deaths that they have come close to. With a reluctant sigh, she nodded. You're right. You're, you're right. I've been treating you like a baby, but... I guess that's because I still see you as one, Spike. I helped raise you since you hatched. I mean, you are young, but you've grown smarter than anyone else your age, and have grown to be more mature than most adults. If you leave us and go to the Dragonlands to take on a challenge that would leave other dragons wounded or worse, then... She shook her head before looking down at her own hooves. I guess I never saw past it. Every time you did something foolish, but I know I shouldn't be looking at you as more than a foal, less like a baby, and more like a friend. Spike smiled though as he looked up at her. That's all I want from you. From every pony. She smiled back at him slowly and put a hoof on her shoulder. I know. I can't tell the others how they should treat you. That is for you to tell them. Especially Rarity. 
I know you keep trying with her, but now that Ember is here, will you stop trying with Rarity and, well, try her? Spike thought about it for a bit. I guess... Rarity will always see me as a baby dragon. Nothing more. I've been so infatuated with her that now I never thought of thinking what would happen if she decided to have a stallion over me in the future. Now that I know that there's another dragon out there that can be kind or as sensitive, well, maybe not as sensitive, but, but that they can be just a bit sensitive or just as caring as me then. He paused, smiling at the thought. I never imagined I would meet someone like Ember. Even if this was something I wanted to do, I don't know, but I guess I should stop trying to fawn over Rarity because I know she will never choose me. Twilight half expected him to break down and cry as he said that out loud, but to her relief, he didn't. Rather, he just took a deep breath, rested his claw on his chest before releasing it slowly. Wow, Spike, she said softly, a bit astonished. That was a pretty mature thing you did. He gave an almost sad smile back at her, putting on a brave mask instead for her. Thanks, Twilight. She brought him close for a hug before releasing him. For what it's worth, Spike, I know that you doing this might change things for all of us, but whatever your decision is, I will support it. He was about to tell her what his decision was, but she quickly stopped him. I just don't want to know just yet, though I think I already know what it is, but I'd rather wait until all of us are here, together, when you tell us, all of us. He gave a nod before quickly giving her another hug. Now, come on, let's go check on our guests. In one of the nearby rooms, Garble was sitting in the corner trying to make sense of the literature that was in these picture books, although his book was actually a magazine and showed various pony models. Meanwhile, the other dragon, Amethyst, was casually chewing on the gems left for her. She was watching Garble irritate himself as he tried to read it, or rather, study it. Are you really trying to read pony books? She asked, chomping on another gem. Shut up, he said to her, though he answered. Just trying to see what makes them so interesting. I mean, look at this pony. She's practically a twig. I could use her to pick my teeth. He pointed at the very tall and thin cream-coated mare with light pink hair, and a tail that covered over her flanks. She was in a strange pose, while holding up some kind of makeup in the picture. He then growled. This is why I hate ponies. Oh? Jealous much? Angry because you haven't been able to score a mate yet? She teased. Garble growled, but stopped when the doors opened and revealed Ember walking in, who looked very dejected. How did it go, Lord Ember? Asked Amethyst. She gave a hard sigh. Spike seems to want to go, but Twilight is holding him back. Garble snorted. Typical weak pony, holding a dragon back. Then again, he is a weak dragon. Ember growled. Weak he may be, but he has a lot more heart and curse than you, Garble. He gave another snort before returning to his magazine. So, Twilight is holding Spike back? But will he still choose you? She gave a small nod. He and I, uh... Both agree that it is in the best interest of Equestria and the Dragonlands. If I keep him as a consort, then, then maybe when he grows up, he can teach us and all the dragons across the kingdom on how to be better to each other. Are you kidding me? Half roared Garble. You want to try and change the Dragonlands to be like the Namby Pamby ponies and go soft and weak? Ember growled. No, I want to change the Dragonlands to be more civilized and caring for one another. I want there to be peace between each other, not constant bickering or fighting for stupid reasons. Like, who has the bigger horde? At this point, Amethyst stopped chewing and watched the heated debate. But that's what makes dragons strong, Garble countered. We are born to be ferocious, strong, and deadly. Trying to change that means you can't handle being a dragon yourself, and that you aren't worthy of wielding the scepter. You are weak at heart, and you're still that little princess just sitting there by daddy's side. The room got a lot hotter in that instant, and it took all of Ember's strength not to launch at Garble and attack him directly. Garble wasn't phased by it. With a steamy snort and a spit of flame, she growled and walked towards him. You will learn to keep your mouth shut, Garble. She spat with hideous venom in her voice. He wasn't intimidated by her a slight bit, being a smaller stature. 
However, that didn't stop her from being threatening, even as she did push her snout close to his. When we get back, expect to be punished. Severely. And trust me, I don't need Spike to think of humiliating ways to punish you as well. Now, back down. She half roared to his face. They both stared at each other, trying to glare each other, but because she was Lord, he had to obey. Without another word, he took a few steps back and lowered his head. He then turned away and sat back down away from the two. Ember gave a snort. She then turned towards the door just as it opened. She saw that both Spike and Twilight seemed to have made up and slowly approached. She sighed before clearing her throat as she calmed herself down, feeling a need to explain herself. I'm sorry I left earlier, but I didn't want to cause any more tension. No need, Ember, Twilight said. I think Spike and I both knew that that conversation was a long time coming. Ember gave a nod. I'm glad you worked it out then. So, have you given an answer? She asked a bit hopefully, it showing just ever so slightly. We have, answered Spike. But I think I will give you the answer tomorrow, at least until all my friends are here so they can hear it. Unsure why it was, she just gave a nod. If he is going to answer me tomorrow, then I know what it is. He just needs to inform his friends and family, she thought to herself. He gave a smile before turning to the other two. Garble was angrily muttering to himself while the other dragon, he still hadn't caught the name earlier, seemed to be content with munching on her gems like popcorn. I know it's only noon, but you all might want to stay overnight. I have a few bedrooms to spare. Spike snorted with a grin. A few? More like a few hundred. Twilight giggled and gave a knowing smile at her number one assistant. But I'm not entirely sure how dragons, uh, well, sleep compared to ponies. Maybe a little bit more info? She sheepishly asked, suddenly the Book of Dragons appearing before her. Ember gave her a look, somewhat enjoying the look of eagerness on Twilight before nodding. Of course, now that I'm here, I can gladly speak of more of our kin. Yes! Twilight squealed as she bounced in place while Ember and Amethyst gave her odd looks before turning to Spike. He gave a shrug, completely used to the sight by this point in his life. She loves to learn new things. Whether it's magic, history, or learning about another species, hell, I think she would get giddy if Queen Chrysalis herself walked in here and asked for an interview with her. Somewhere in the Badlands, Queen Chrysalis herself felt her nose twitch, and she sneezed. Ember then turned to her guards. Amethyst, Garble, I want you to stay here while Twilight and I exchange pleasantries. She then turned and spoke to the back of Garble's head. I want no problems. Is that understood? Amethyst nodded while Garble grumbled. Spike saw that they both, mostly Amethyst, had finished a small pile of gems for snacks. Well, while you guys do that, um, maybe I can whip us all something to eat for lunch. Ember gave him a bemused look. You can cook? Oh, Spike is almost the best cook in town. Well, except for Pinkie Pie, one of our other friends, but he still makes the best meals around. He cooked for Princess Celestia herself while we lived in Cancer Law, and he can just make about anything. Spike took the compliment with stride as he took a small bow, while Ember looked a bit impressed. Not only are you intelligent, courageous, and kind, but you also know how to make a good meal for those you care for? Huh. Now that is a dragon worth his weight in gold. A true drake, she said, complimenting him when it was due. Garble snorted. If you wanted a true drake, all you had to do was look in this direction. I am all that is dragon if not more. I can easily hunt for food better than he can prepare. He spoke, trying to make himself sound and look tough by standing up and flexing his wings. Everyone gave him a look, even Ember and Amethyst. Tired of his attitude, Ember decided to play it off then. Yeah, some drake you are. If Spike says no tomorrow and I still had to choose between you since you were the second dragon to come in and another dragon to be my mate, I would do so. She then gave a grin and walked over to Amethyst. In fact, I would honestly choose Amethyst to be my consort than you. At least she knows how to treat a dragon ass. If I were to lay with her, which way more likely than me choosing you, I have no doubt that she would do the same. Amethyst gave her a look before seeming to weigh the options and agreed. The room fell silent as a stunned Garble looked to the dragoness, then to Amethyst while Spike was on the verge of having a serious meltdown at what he just heard. There was no way things could get any hotter. I would do so too, answered Amethyst. 
However, just to annoy Garble more, she leaned in and gave Ember a little brush of her snout and it looked like to be a draconic kiss as she gave a small lick to the side. Several things happened at once. Ember didn't react to it, rather her grin grew. Garble's mouth dropped to the floor, Twilight was staring wide-eyed at the display, and Spike passed out on the floor again. 